Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. If you're just joining this nuclear submarine deep dive series, boy, have I got a treat for you. We have covered a ton of stuff that happens on board nuclear submarines. We looked at sonar, we looked at torpedoes, how to make air, food, water, all this stuff, the command structure. This has been a fascinating series on board the USS Toledo as it participates in ISEX in the Arctic. We're under the ice in the nuclear submarine. It's awesome. So today's video is the next to last video in the series. We're gonna end the whole series by surfacing through the ice, which is fascinating and far more complicated than I could imagine. But I needed a video to try to catch all the things that didn't really have another place. So today on Smarter Every Day, we're gonna talk about all these things that you might not think to ask about life on board a nuclear submarine until you find yourself on a nuclear submarine. So to get started, I wanna show you a game that I learned on board. It's called Cribbage. I saw it in the cruise mess, I saw it in the wardroom, and I saw it in the chief's quarters. This is a game that involves cards and using a clever arrangement of numbers and stuff like that and pegs to keep track of your score. If you were looking closely during the sonar video, you could see above the whiteboard that Chief Luth was using to explain sonar to me, there was a scoreboard of sorts between the captain and the executive officer. That's how important cribbage is on a submarine. So, I mean, this is a built-in cribbage board. So what's the deal with cribbage? This is like the, the second or third time I've seen it. So it's a game you can play on a, on a ship that's moving around. Yeah. Oh, that's, so, that's why it's a naval, like a navy tradition. Because the pegs, because if the boats yeah. move, it doesn't matter. So on old sailing ships, they drill holes in the in the wood and they put the pegs in, and that's how they played. That's awesome. It's like the underway thing. Just to waste some time, blow off some steam. Really? Some math, quick in your head. Really? It's pretty fun. Yes, a lot of fun. So like all all submariners know how to play cribbage. I, I mean, would most. Uh, most most of us know. Not really? all of us. Who's the best? Uh. He claims to be. Uh, the <laughs> it, it varies on who you're playing. How long does it take to play one game? It, it varies. 15, it depends 10, on how 15, good, good your hands are. If 15, everybody's 10, 15 good minutes. hands, it doesn't take long. Well, some people can't count, so it yeah. takes long. Yeah. <laughs> <people> don't count. <laughs> you, don't, you don't play check. <laughs> yeah, people, people don't count. Just need a translator. It's, it's, it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, but speaking English. Yeah. <laughs> Second language, language of the English, you know? <laughs> Where are you from? South, South Carolina. Carolina. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Did you just see the shame on this thing? South Carolina. He's like, I know what I'm going to say. My accent comes in every now and then, too. So. Do you know what code switching is? Uh, code switching is when you hear someone talk in a certain way and you try to match it. Okay. I do that so hard. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was talking to this fancy lady the other day, and then someone came up from like South Alabama. They're like, "Hey, man, how's it going?" I was like, "What's up, man? How's it going?" And she's like, "Destin, are you okay?" What's up? It's, it's just a thing, man. So this is a shirt from the for the sub. That's well, our from our chief's quarters. quarters. That's our actual chief shirt. Oh, you have a you have a shirt for here. Yes. Like this, <laughs> like like this twenty square feet has like its own shirt. So this literally is a club. Yeah. <laughs> can, I know the, can I know the handshake? Don't even act like there's not a handshake. There's no handshake. There is no handshake. No handshake. Well, let me let me teach you one. So yeah, yeah. So like that, and then you you roll it up, roll it up, and you throw it down, and step on it. You can't smoke on a submarine. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I like that. Morale is a huge thing on the boat at all times. That's why submariners get really good food, right? One thing that I didn't realize could be used as a tool to increase morale is facial hair. I kid you not, mustaches are used specifically in order to increase morale on the boat. There's a special individual on the boat that I had never heard of this position. It's called the yeoman. This person is in charge of all the admin. So for example, how do you get paid? Like how do you make sure like everything is accounted for and all the admin stuff is straightened out? This is a very important job. So it was really interesting to speak to Petty Officer Cleveland and understand what the role of the yeoman is. I'm in charge of all the administration on the boat, handle, handle all the crew's uh, pay issues, uh, and all the instructions, and I just take charge, make sure accountability for all the personnel we have on board. So how do you do that? So typically when you think about pay, you, you have to go back to like, I don't know, headquarters. Uh, so, so we are essentially the boat's headquarters. Um, if anybody has a problem with their uh, pay, for instance, they'll let us know and we go and track that down. We call our, we call who we report to and we try to uh, handle the situations we can. Okay, so that, that gives me a really interesting question. So you're underwater for months. Yes, sir. So how do, how do people get paid? I don't, I don't understand that. Do you, um, so you're not like handing out cash on the boat. 
you know, so we try not to. But uh, <laughs> essentially, when we pull back in, most of our about ninety percent of our job is import. So when we get back into port, we're going to be pretty much busy with everything we do. But uh, when we're underwater, we handle instructions, notices, the typical correspondence stuff. Everything should be routed through us. We try to. What do you mean correspondence? Like uh, mail? Mail, um, letters, uh, local instructions, anybody procedures typically if something happens with someone's pay for instance they go back and they don't get as much as they expect then they give up they print out what they're entitled to and we just compare the numbers got it so it's all direct deposit back home yes sir so it's going into your bank account it should be it should be, <laughs> it should be. and if it's not it's a it's a pretty big issue really you yes, gotta sir. handle it really fast yes sir got it oh i guess that makes sense because this, if there is a pay issue back home and your family has the issue you don't know because you guys are all secret squirrel stealth down here. Yes, sir. Yeah, has that ever happened? Many times, yes, sir. Really? Yes. And so you're the guy that comes and saves the saves the day. Yes, sir. It keeps us busy. So you're good with numbers? Yes, sir. I try to be. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. Nice to meet you. You too, sir. A couple things about sleeping on a submarine. Number one, I was dog tired. So I am not a good like barometer for what it's actually like to sleep on a submarine because I was tired. I had flown over the Arctic, landed on an ice flow, took a sled out to Camp Sea Dragon, spent some time freezing there, and then took a helicopter out to the submarine and toured on the submarine and asked the, the most intense questions I could think of for hours and hours and hours. I was tired. So I, they could have told me to sleep anywhere and it would have felt great to me, but I did not have the typical sleeping experience, which is these long halls and you gotta be super quiet, no light. This is where people sleep. And you might be sharing a bunk based on what shift you're working. For me, they're like, look, you're a visitor. We're gonna put you in the executive officer's cabin. He's got an extra bunk. That's where you're staying. And I was like, what? I would wanna see what the other, they're like, nope, you're staying there. And I said, yes, sir. And boy, did I sleep good. Okay, it's time to go to bed. We're gonna flip the lights to red. And, oh, it's so fun because I don't know what I'm doing. So this is what I got. This is the night. These are the nice bunks. These are like the really nice bunks. Oh, there's the light right there. Oh, wow. Look at that. Neat. Okay. Well, it's time to go to bed. Good night. Okay. Just woke up. XO, what is it you said we were doing? So the day just started. Uh, the oncoming watch team is already brief. Right now we got breakfast going in the wardroom. It's kind of a special day. We got waffles with uh, strawberry hard pack, chocolate syrup, eggs, uh, and, and all kinds of stuff. Did you say waffles and ice cream for yeah, breakfast? We do have waffles and ice cream. It's not a common thing. It's only happened a couple of times, but uh, we made sure we loaded up right for this underway. Okay. So. Uh, all right, here we go. So what's the... Uh, What's the, what are we gonna do now? So schedules, we're gonna go have some breakfast. After that, we got people set up to do some interviews with you. And then once that's done, uh, there's gonna be the vertical surfacing of the ship. So we'll have you back in control to see how the whole party comes together to put the sail out through the ice and make sure we're stable on the surface. Kind of what you watched yesterday, but in reverse. Uh -huh. And then uh, once that's done, based on the timeline for your departure, we'll see if there's a little bit more time for any questions you might have for us or questions we might have for you. Sounds good, thanks. Yeah. All right. I had never even considered ice cream on waffles, but it was incredible, and I just want to show you a picture of what that's like. It's wonderful. You should try it. Okay, so this is the stateroom. This is where uh, the senior officers live. Uh, so this is kind of one of the perks of going to college and coming in as an officer, right? You get a, you get a little bit more space to yourself. Um, so this is one room. It's got three beds in it. Each person gets a couple of different lockers here. So you see uh, there's uh, two on top and bottom for each person. I didn't leave my room clean. <laughs> is this your room today? This is my room. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you. Um, and then if you uh, if you turn around here, you can see we got uh, these drop-down desks 
where we have our laptops. So there's two workstations per stateroom. And uh, a safe. Yep, we got a safe, and then uh, each stateroom has one uh, what we call low side and unclass system, and then uh, there's two classified systems for us. To work so you on. can email like home. Uh, when we have the ability to communicate. Got it. Yep. Which comes and goes. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, this one's a little interesting. When I went on board the submarine, I wanted to understand the atmospheric pressure that I was under as we dove down under the ocean. So I took this little pressure gauge on board to measure the pressure inside the submarine when I was there, and I noticed when I was looking at the CAMS data that we're over 760 TOR, which is one atmosphere. So that means we are over one atmosphere of pressure and I found that to be fascinating. Now, I didn't really learn anything from this, but here's the data. You can see on the graph here, this is what the pressure history was while I was on the submarine, and learn from that what you will. So how do you deal with medical emergencies on board a submarine? I progressively learned how important this was on board. Um, this is my first contact with what that was like. So this is where all the medical stuff happens on board, right? Yep. So what kinds of things can you accomplish in this little this little room? Uh, in this little room, not very much. Uh, most of my patient care happens in the wardroom. Where people so, eat? Yep. So if I have to do a surgery or something like that, I do it over there. Uh, just like two weeks ago, I filled somebody's tooth in the wardroom. Really? Yep. So when you say surgery, what happens if somebody has like appendicitis or something and so, you're you're at sea for multiple months. So appendicitis we treat with a bunch of antibiotics. So we'll start with IV antibiotics, pain management, and a bunch of uh, bunch of antibiotics. Really? Really? We, so you don't oh, actually do the cut here? No, no. We haven't cut on anybody in a long time on board. But, but it's something you can do? Uh, theoretically, um, but it's not something that we're like really trained to do. Got it. Understood. So right now, for example, I have a headache. Are you the guy yep. that I had yep. can I Can I get some aspirin or something? Yeah, definitely. Common every ship like went to a normal full power line. So is this where all the, the medication is on board? Uh, this is a portion of it. This is the ready stock. So I have ready stock meds here, stuff that I use all the time. And then I have lockers all over the boat. You see them with the uh, red crosses on them. Got it. Uh, they have either medical equipment or medications. Got it. Here we go. Thank you very much. I'll take this two, okay? Yep, two's fine. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Can I just drink water right here? Yep. Okay. Okay, so at that moment, uh, in my experience on board the Toledo, it seemed like a pretty interesting stop. Like, oh, okay, this is where you get your aspirin, right? Except, not long after this conversation, I kid you not, someone was injured on board while doing their duty, and it was what I would classify as a serious medical emergency. And if it were me and you, for example, we would have gone to the emergency room. It was significant, but we were in the Arctic Ocean. There was no emergency room. There was a ward room table. So what happened is they went in there and they dealt with it. I elected to not film it. I wasn't told not to film it, but I knew that if this was me and I was injured in this way, I wouldn't want anybody filming me. So I told the public affairs officer with me, I was like, hey, I'm gonna cut my cameras off because that just feels like the right thing to do. The Navy didn't tell me I can't talk about it or anything like that, but to respect the privacy of the individual that was injured, I've decided to not talk about it. What I can tell you is even though it seemed like they had rudimentary medical facilities, they dealt with a very intense situation involving like wounds and stuff right there in the middle of the Arctic, and it was impressive. This was a significant enough event that when they poked out of the ice, which you'll learn about in the next episode, when they sent me home, they sent this individual with me because they wanted this individual to get to medical facilities. So that's what happened. Next thing, showers. I really care about showers. It's a big deal for me. So I wanna know how to take a shower or at least get clean while on a submarine. Okay, so this is the XO for the Toledo. Sir, sir, just run through. Just, just give me the name, everything. Sure, awesome. So, uh, my name's Georg Andrews. I've been in the Navy for 15 years now as a submariner. This is my third submarine, third class of submarine. Uh, I was on board the Henry M. Jackson as a junior officer. I was then on the John Warner as a department head, and now I'm here as an XO of the Toledo. It's been a pretty amazing experience. Um, I work hand in hand with uh, Commander Castellano. My, my job is to run the boat, so he, uh, he can kind of focus the boat, point us in the right direction. 
um, and I've uh, been excited and enjoyed living with you for, for the last portion of the day and, and sharing our spaces with you. And yeah, I'll thank you for sharing your quarters with me. I appreciate Absolutely. that. Yeah. So. Right. This, this is your restroom, right? Correct. This is the COXO head, so it's, it's shared really just by the two of us. Uh, we have a shower here on the right, um, which uh, is your standard shower, hot and water, or hot and cold water access, and it has a uh, recirc pump so that the uh, water stays hot and you can use it quickly and efficiently and minimize water usage, uh, which is a, a, a constant drive for us to, to try and minimize water usage. Uh, we're able to make plenty of water, uh, but if you use less, you have to pump off less, and when you have to pump off less, you're making sure you're staying quiet as long as possible. So, uh, everything that we can do to minimize usage or, or waste generation is uh, is something that we're always striving to, to achieve. Got it. So, so if I take a shower in here, how long should that shower be? You can take it as, as long as you want. But what should it be? Uh, it's typically three to five minutes. Okay, three to five minutes. Yep. And then the process is it's up to you, but we'll uh, we'll get ourselves nice and wet, shut off the water, soap up. Turn on the water, rinse off, shut off the water again, and that's that's your that's your standard submarine shower. That's what you do. Yep. Okay, got it. And the big question, how do you go to the bathroom on a nuclear submarine? And this is actually a more complicated thing than I realized. Now this, this bad boy in here, this is not a normal toilet. This is not a normal toilet. So uh, we have pressurized seawater that we use in order to do flushing uh, water when you're done. Um, there's a ball valve there, which is uh, plumbing three. So you use the toilet, you'll open the ball valve and you'll see the water go down. Like so, or the waste go down like so. Oh, it's a straight up ball valve. Yep. Okay, so, so it goes down, and then you'll uh, refill when you're done. Yeah. Now, as Doc was saying earlier, we have a procedure for literally everything on board. So you'll see right here, we have the uh, instructions for uh, flushing water closets. So yeah. That, uh, in case you you just happen to forget that it's there and, <laughs> and waiting for you. So. Um, with respect to these, so downstream we have other valves that we can use to isolate that system. That way when we uh, dispose of our waste, we don't send that pressure this way. It's important that the guys get that portion of the procedure right because uh, it'll come out this way if you're not uh, if you're not careful about, about doing it. We also have signs here to make I, sure. I've heard of, okay, that's the sign? Yep, this is our uh, blowing sand sign. So we'll set it up so that when uh, when those tanks are being isolated for, uh, for their discharging, that um, you don't accidentally come in here and find yourself taking the pressure in a different direction. It's like uh, it's like the world's worst bidet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not what you want. So, so there's a lot of engineering that goes on behind all this stuff. That is correct. Okay. A lot of engineering, a lot of procedures, a lot of training for those guys especially to make sure that uh, they, they understand how to execute it from, from the moment they start doing it. So why do you backfill it with water? The backfilling is, uh, it helps perform, provide a seal so that none of the, the smell can come up in the other direction uh, in the event that there's any leakage past the ball valve. Makes sense. I noticed there's a lot of literature up here as well. Yep. And so what's all this? So these are uh, different manuals that we have with respect to uh, our both our engineering and, and, and stuff back aft. Uh, we have a drawing booklet as well and a couple different binders that we all keep. In the event that there's a question that needs to be resolved or uh, equipment thing that needs to be worked through, most likely it's going to be in one of these books primarily. There's other books or other things that we can pick up on our land. Uh, our, our network mm -hmm. to, to do research on, but usually it's out of one of these books, and so it's easy for us to just grab it, open it up, and show the captain what it is that's, uh, that we're talking about and where we're at in the procedure. Got it. And I saw, am I allowed to look at this? Yes. Okay. So I noticed you have like stuff like this everywhere. Correct. I mean, you have stuff like this in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So is that just because you need the space, or? So the commanding officer stateroom is set up for uh, being our controlling station during any casualty. Uh, so as a result, you'll have 
the weapons officer typically come in here and man uh, DC Central. He'll be making announcements over the 1MC, which is our shipwide announcing circuit, and I'll be communicating with him at the scene of the casualty, be it flooding, fire, hydraulic rupture, whatever it happens to be. Um, and they will track using these boards the various equipment that we're using as well as the different announcements that we need to make and the sequence of, that we're going to be using to go through fighting the actual casualty. So um, this will get opened. He'll mark stuff up as he goes. What, what do you mean opened? Is so there this, a door? This, yeah, this is actually oh, it's a, a door. door. This is the door that opens up into the CO stateroom. So his stateroom's there. Mine's on this side. Oh, He's so, this so that's there. where the CO is? Yes, sir. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's asleep in there right now. Oh. Yeah. I genuinely thought that he was like down the hall, like really far. No. He's right there. Yeah. Okay. Right next to each other. Gotcha. Okay. I had no idea. This is amazing. Okay. Well, thank you for the tour. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to try to use these facilities now. Urinals work the exact same way. Valve. Valve. Okay. The fact that above my head, when I was using the facilities, there were all these books that explained how nuclear submarines worked and like the inner workings of everything, it was very tempting to not have some really interesting reading material while I was there, but I did not. There you go. I have used the bathroom on a nuclear submarine. <laughs> This episode of Smarter Every Day is sponsored by Raycon Earbuds. I'm gonna do this unboxing here to show you exactly what you get in the package when they get mailed to your house. And these are called the Everyday E25s. These things are fantastic. They're about half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. I like Raycons because they have this little pill that you can keep the earbuds themselves in and it charges the earbuds themselves for over six hours of playtime. These things come in all different kinds of colors. I prefer the blue or the black, but pick whichever color you like the best. Bluetooth is is really easy to get wrong, but Raycon gets it right. The pairing is seamless. If at any point you want to pause your music or your audiobook, just hit this little button on the outside and it will pause your music. Just tap it again and you're off running again. You're not going to use it, but in the event that you wanted to take advantage of a 45 day return policy, you got it, but you're going to love them. The engineers at Raycon know how important your ear hole size is to you, so they included a variety of ear hole adapters so you can get the perfect ear hole fit for you. Look at that. Once you've found your perfect fit in the ear hole, this is a real test. Watch this. In my ear hole. Watch this. In my ear hole. Watch this. No, no movement. Stuck right in the ear hole. Did you see that? No movement whatsoever. Stays. <laughs> I'm being silly. I love these things. I honestly do. Check them out. Go to buyraycon.com slash smarter. That gets you 15% off any order. I highly recommend the Everyday E25. I use these things to run, love them. They do not fall out. Check it out, buyraycon.com slash smarter, 15% off. You're gonna dig them. I only talk about products here on Smarter Every Day. I love, this is part of my everyday carry. Yeah, so thank you very much to Raycon for supporting the video. Thank you for watching the Submarine Deep Dive series here on Smarter Every Day. Next episode, we're gonna finish this thing out. We're gonna surface the ship from under the Arctic ice, which is a super big deal. So feel free to subscribe if you're into that, you wanna see that. If not, no big deal. I'm just glad you watched this. I'm Destin, you're getting smarter every day. Have a good one, bye.